Hey, welcome into the Sports Edge, powered by SportsHandicapper.com. And look who it is. The champ is here. The Westgate 2021 winner, the great Seely McNeely. Of course, the proprietor of SportsHandicapper.com. You had mentioned to me you got the AC on because your fish tank, your aquarium was too hot. Why is it too hot? And the, the temperature in my office gets so hot in here for all the, all the electronic stuff I have in here that it just the place gets so hot that the winter goes up in temperature. It's April. It's, really, it's hard. I know it's eighty five outside today, so it's hard to uh, cool this room down. I had my uh, extra air conditioning unit on, and uh, I had to cut the lights off to the tank. Most of them. It's, it's tough being a fish owner. It's not easy. A lot of work. You know, it's not easy being green seal, but uh, you you are getting a lot of green for the people out there. Now, unfortunately, we've got JB. Jamie's on assignment today. I think he's tending sheep in outside of manchester england sideburns and uh, was he something to do with he mentioned to me he was investing in a soda company a soda pop company so he had meetings today and then starsky is also on assignment in hawaii on the beach getting ready for a very big surfing contest so they're not with us this week it's just you and i i, I think i just saw mini seal stretch by there you, you did he, so is the government coming after him yet for all the money he owes for the Trump bet? Uh, he's doubling down in November. Don't worry. All right. Well, he's going to be doubling down and losing with double the money. Uh, but no, see, let's let's get into the you know, Major League Baseball and we'll get into your your plays for today in a second. But you're already off, and we talked about this last week and the, and the week before as we got set to start uh, the Major League Baseball season. You're great at a lot of things. Obviously, you're the king of football. You won the freaking Westgate. But base, and you're also the self-proclaimed and actual king of the MAC in, in Mid American Conference football. But there's not many that are as good as you at Major League Baseball, especially early in the season. And we've discussed why there is a ton of value. You had mentioned, I think it was last week, wanting to see the pitchers get one start, but why there's a lot of value early in the season. Explain that again to people. Well, the key to early season baseball betting is tread it lightly because a lot of weird things happen early in the season and then they return to the norm as the season goes on. For instance, the Oakland A's keep winning. They keep beating Tampa Bay. That's not going to happen in July. No. Pitchers aren't aren't 100% stretched out. They're not. Some of them are probably lame and they don't know it yet. Like, I'll, I'll give you a name to the, a guy that's that I think is not thrown well. There's a few guys out there. Robbie Ray, off his fantastic season last year. Former I, Detroit Tiger. No, not Robbie Ray. Yeah, Robbie Ray was a Tiger. Come on, I thought you were the self-proclaimed king of baseball. What? We well, never pitched for him. Did he uh, Myers? Or, uh, yeah, he was. He was on the big league roster for I think it was a year. He was a Tiger. What was that? I don't know. Six years ago. I don't. I don't remember him as a Tiger. Well, I'm disappointed because you don't forget anything, and I can't believe you forgot that Robbie Ray was a Tiger. Robbie Ray was on the Tigers in he, – he started with the Tigers. May 6, 2014 was his debut. He was with the Tigers in 2014 before he went to Arizona. Oh, I did not – And he actually had a decent year that year. Yeah, he, well, he had a great year last year, but his his stuff's down this year. I don't know. Can't, I mean, can't he, believe he you forgot about Robbie Ray as a Tiger. Robbie Ray, uh, he might have some problems. But I, a lot of the sharp guys don't play baseball until the pitchers go through – one or two times through the rotation. Right. Well, you are a, one of those sharp of guys, movement. but you've been successful so far. There's not a lot of movement in baseball early, and there really hasn't been. Um, but just gotta, you got to tread lightly, pick your spots, and stick it in early. Ooh, stick it in. Now, listen, a couple days ago, you were 3-0. and I know that uh, there was a 2-1 and day in there. I mean, you, you're, you're way up. And I think that it's important that you explain to people because, you know, we do this show for a lot of different reasons. We want people to get to know people like you and obviously, you know, Starsky and Sideburns and Jamie and, and most importantly, myself. I mean, I'm a squatch, but we want people to understand where we're, co- you're, we're coming from and why plays are made. Also, to give you some insight on why there's been a tremendous amount of success with people like you, obviously, winning the Westgate and th- this whole group we've had for years and years and years that has just got this incredible track record, but also to help people. And, you know, people are going to sign up for Sports Handicap. That's great. Some might not just watch the show, see your plays, 
and and go from there. Maybe they'll watch it. We're not doing the show to get people to sign up for sportshandicapper.com. We, we do this because it's fun for us, and we're making a ton of money on the plays anyway. Why not help people? We're not going out there saying, oh, we're, you know, 100% or, I, I mean, anyone says 100%, they're stupid. But, you know, anyone that says they have like a 78% win percentage or, you know, get, pay, pay $500 and we'll give you our thousand star play. We're not doing that. It's all, it's all, you know, kept track of. It's all transparent. Is that the president calling? Make sure you hang up on him. The, the um, president. It's all, it's all transparent. That's why we love what we're doing. But I think it's also important that you let people know what some of the things you do that are that are gaining you profitability, whether it's a first five innings bet, first five innings totals bets. I mean, there's a lot of different things you do that maybe the novice or average batter is not looking at every day. And those are I look at it as like, you know, you have the opportunity to invest in Apple or Yahoo or whatever stock it was years ago. I'm not comparing that to making, you know, a Tuesday afternoon baseball bet, but there's opportunities out there and you don't want to miss out on them. And I think that there's a lot of things you do that maybe the, the average batter is not looking to bet like a first five inning. And there's great value in that, isn't there? Oh, yeah. I, 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 from time to time, I bet team totals. It's not just betting game straight. You got you to look for uh, something where there's value. Like yesterday, I, I think Robbie Ray, there's something wrong with him. I think I'll bet you right now he has to deal within three weeks. Yeah, well, Mark, you, watch, you watch all these games. Listen, you're up at four in the morning. Studying, and we talked last night. You're like, I gotta get to bed. I got an hour of sleep coming up. I mean, you're up at four in the morning. You're reading. You're watching. You know, film. I, I think that it's incredible the the amount of work you do, and and the respect level I and so many have for what you do. You're doing all the work for everyone out there. It's like what Jamie does with his golf stuff, and you're looking at different things like Robbie Ray going on the DL or a pitcher not looking right and still getting a start. And you could bang a first five or you could bang a total or whatever it is, and that's how you're successful. It's important that people understand that, whether they're yeah. they're buying your picks or not. Yeah, like for instance, I do my work in the morning. I bet in the morning. I go first. And a lot of other crews, they bet. They don't bet till ten o'clock Eastern time when they can get down really big. When they're betting, not many people are betting right now. But the big guys go that bet big big money. They can't bet till ten o'clock Eastern time to, so they can get down. So I go first. Now if I'm on the right side with them, that's fine. If I'm against them. I might need a little bit of the number, but most of the time when I bet, uh, the games go with me, and uh, I just go first. Oh, I the get- high majority of the time, you're being yeah. humble. The high majority of the time that you bet, whether it's baseball, whether it's NBA, whether it's NFL, college, whatever, they the line definitely go 80% of the time or more goes with you. Explain why some of those big groups can't bet till 10 a.m. Eastern. They, they want to get down as much as they can, and a lot of these places, I mean, some of these, you know, these guys have, 50, 75 outs to bet, but if they're looking at like $200, 100 hours, some places, 500. It's all, you know, they, and especially early places are circled. The limits are circled. So they, they right. like to bet when they're open. Isn't it amazing, though, that these days, whether you're betting on the legal apps like FanDuel or DraftKings that we have in, in our states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, or you're betting offshore, whatever it is, that how far we've come. I mean, back in the day, you never had overnight lines. Now you have overnight lines. Now you have lines sometimes two, three days in advance. You could bet them right away. You have look ahead lines. I mean, I know that offshore they were having more options than they did in, like, you know, obviously Vegas until these betting apps be, became legal state by state. But having all those options is just a, a bigger chance to win more money, Seal. Yeah, it is. But the problem if you're betting big, big money, those overnight lines are not worth anything. A lot of places don't take a decent bet. Right. So. If you want to get down on something big, you got to do it, you know. Yeah, you got to wait. You got to wait till the, the, the limits are regular, not uh, circled. All right. Well, we do. Uh, we do have for the first time this baseball season. We do have some. As I can't find it, where to go? Here we go. <laughs> we got breaking news. We've got your biggest bet so far this year. Tell people what you're on as we record this show on a Thursday afternoon. They still have time to get this action in later tonight. I know it's your biggest bet of the baseball year so far. Yeah, I, I made a pretty man-sized bet on uh, the Yankees. I laid 15 this morning. I also laid 15 on the first five innings on that game. I, I, I really like the way Servino looked. I don't like the way Gosman looked. His fastball's down a couple notches. I think what he throw, they'll hit him. 
I really like the Yankees pretty pretty good today. It's my biggest bet so far this year. I haven't been betting big, but uh, I semi removed the rubber band from the wad today on this game. Semi, I didn't take the whole rubber band off, but I well, uh, you, you, you off. take the whole rubber band off. You're, you're you're betting you know in the six figures, so we can't do that in baseball. Not not this early. Yeah. So that game, and I also uh, bet the Angels. A normal play for me. So explain again. You know when you look at making taking a shot a big shot early as you've explained to people why you got to be careful and have some trepidation early in the season this week you gave some great reasoning there but why is it important when you look at making a big bet this early in the year and why you liked it so much today with the yankees i just like the, the matchup the pitching matchup i, I just uh, double 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 whammy for me i, I really like like i said the servino looked really really sharp his last start against the Red Sox, and uh, I wasn't impressed with Gosman against the Rangers. I don't, I don't know. And he hasn't been that great since the second half of last season. He's a funny kind of guy. When he's going, he can pump the fastball in there, 96, 97. He's, he's tickling 92 and a half, 93 too much for me. He's no, he's not good enough at that number. And you get the Yanks right now. What about you? What did you get him at? It's 140 as we record here. What did you get the Yankees at? I think I laid the Angels at one. They laid 135 on the Yankees. And what about the Yanks? The Yankees minus 15. Yep, and that line is now up to 140, which, you know, once again, we're trying to explain to you why you got to get sealed stuff if you if you want to get involved in it because you'll bet these games early. And let's say, for example, baseball, minus 115, now it's minus 140. Football, you know, the Cardinals minus three, it goes to five. Uh, NBA, the, the Timber Shits, as you like to call them. By the way, great win by the Timber Shits the other night. Let's say the Timberwolves are getting four and a half. Next thing you know, they're getting one and a half. So it's important. I mean, it doesn't always happen. I mean, we, full full disclosure, it doesn't always happen, but the high majority of the time, Seal, when you're banging these games, you mentioned it earlier, and you're you're a very humble guy. So like you were you know, saying it's a boast, the games move with you. And that's why you got to get down early on these. Yeah, my, my customers, they, they, they got this game at uh, 7 o'clock this morning. So, And, yeah, I, and I, I, I gave it out before I even bet it. It moved early because of me. But and by good. the way, you mentioned the last uh, start for Severino was that game against Boston, and did, did, he did have a solid start. Um, I know he didn't get the win, but he, he gave up no runs. and he's, got, he's, he's still at a zero ERA, right? So Severino is – I like the matchup as well. And, and Gaussman's got a 5-4 ERA. Uh, and I think, that, you know, the Yankees are an interesting team, but they they seem to play pretty good baseball at home early in the season. That's been the way it's been the last several years. Yeah, I mean, I'm not totally impressed with the Yankees. I like their bullpen. Their defense is a little better than last year. Uh, it all depends if their big guys hit. I mean, sometimes they go in slumps. They strike out a lot, unfortunately. So, you know, we'll see. All right. Well, we got Yanks and Angels tonight. Anything else you're looking at over the next couple of days? I know you're not really, you never really bet ahead uh, of the I schedule. Look, I, don't look, I don't look ahead to the next day. No, nope, so nope. see, it's always 4 a.m. for the next the next day. Yep. Yeah, well, no look aheads. Not, All right. What are we doing tonight for dinner? Uh, where are we at on the cheesesteak watch? I already, I, went to, I already have one for lunch. I can't do a cheesesteak in for dinner. Where is it from? Uh, Steve Steaks, the Prince of Steaks. I need him so, for a home. I'm sorry, who's that imposter in the background? That would be Mrs. Seal. Mrs. Seal, I don't know if I authorized you to come on the show today. Yeah, uh, she it, wasn't authorized. It but. seems a little quiet, and since you've already deviated into food, <laughs> I thought that I might have something to add. About yeah, I, I think it's a violation to bring a cheesesteak home from somewhere to eat. At a later date. You think you need to eat the cheesesteak at the restaurant? They have to be hot and they have to be eaten fresh. Well, they definitely have to be hot, but you don't have but to then, eat it at the restaurant. The, but then Mr. Seal brings the trash in from the car and you go and you and he doesn't put it in the trash can. So you get all excited and you're like, wow, maybe Mr. Seal brought me home like a bite left of his cheesesteak. So you dig through all the wrappers. And it's just trash. And it's just trash. That's a way. Uh, Seal, you went with the, the great daughter, Sports Handicap for Chip Livers and Onions, yesterday to the Phillies game and stayed three innings. Explain explain that to everybody. <laughs> well, um, Paid 70 a ticket, got there at the top of the second, left of the sixth. I left after the fifth. Um, after the fifth I'm sorry, after the fifth. 
I, I don't know. I wanted to beat the traffic home. I like to get home. If you, I understand. My dad's the same way, but don't worry about traffic. Enjoy the day with your wonderful, beautiful daughter at the ballpark. And and Mini Seal was there too. Mini Seal. What we'll kind of snacks? How much? How much did Mini Seal eat? Probably seven hot dogs. He only ate. No, it, it, the lines were so long to get food that you can't find it. it, it you miss like two innings if you if you stay in line. I where, missed, where, uh, how big, how like, how how well attended was the game? It was, it was, it was a nice crowd. I would say there was about thirty thousand there. For it's not bad for it's not bad for a Wednesday it, afternoon. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a beautiful day here in Philly. It was here too. It was it was, it was like. Six I, I, do have a, I, I do have a problem with fourteen dollar beers. It's a little 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 pricey, don't you think? Yeah, to just sneak in your own like flask or something. Like my dad and grandpa used to do at Michigan games. I mean, fourteen dollars for a can of beer is is a little outrageous. Well, I got. I mean, I would have left early because I never leave games early, really, unless my dad is with me and you know, my grandpa back in the day. But you didn't miss anything because the Mets won nine to six, so at least you beat traffic and, and didn't have to see a loss. That's true. That's true. I, I, I still should have stayed. stayed on the ninth inning. I don't care if it was tight. First of all, you can't see anything. You can't see the pitches. It's so much better on TV. I mean, you were anybody yeah, I mean, see, I know it's better on TV. There's nothing like being there. I was at Tigers opening day, that crazy walk off. Yeah, if I had been at home, it was kind of chilly. I didn't care about the weather. Speaking of livers and onions, there she is. Hello. Hey, we could have used you today, but you were sleeping, I heard. No, I wasn't sleeping. That's no, what your dad said. You look quite delightful, though. Did you yeah. enjoy the baseball game with your dad, even though you left after three innings? No, because we left. I didn't get to watch the baseball game. See, she wanted to stay. Yeah, no shit. And he's sitting there. No uh, cursing on the oh, radio. Sorry. And the whole time, he's, um, like, he says that we saved for three innings, but an hour of it was getting food and drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shocked that Minnie Seal didn't have, like, two pretzels, three hot dogs, and, like, five burgers. They only had chicken fingers, one hot dog, and one pretzel. pretzel. Yeah, that's that's like it's like a fifth of a meal for him. I mean, well, we were in Vegas, the guy ate six meals a day. He didn't have time to eat because we weren't there long enough. He would have ate more. All right, before we completely descend into madness, I'm going to allow Mrs. Seal and even Livers and Onions to be involved with this. Parting shots. Once again, you're on the Angels and uh, Yanks today. Please check out uh, sportsanticamber.com. Sportsanticamber, Chip, what's your parting shot? Um, stay safe out there, everyone, and go get them in baseball. Yeah, what are your plans this weekend, Livers and Onions? Well, he has to take me to the train in... Are you going to party at college? I do. Yeah, I'm going to Temple Friday, Saturday, and we have Passover dinner on... Or Thursday, Friday, and then we have Passover dinner on Saturday. Sweet. All right, Mrs. Seal, what's your parting shot? Happy Easter and happy Passover to all of the thousands of listeners out there. Yeah, well, it's actually millions. And then, Seal, what kind of a big Passover feast do you have planned? The usual brisket, matzo ball soup. Salmon. Ooh, it's, uh, will you save me some brisket, please? Potato, potato I'm, lockers. I'm a vagabond for night one because my parents uh, sadly got divorced about seven, eight years ago now. And my dad got remarried and they're going to the in-laws. And I'm not on the, uh, it's not that I can't go if I really wanted to, but I'm not on the invite list because it's a small, they're still being careful. But then my mom is having a Passover, br- she likes doing brunches for every holiday. So we're doing a Passover brunch on Sunday, so I'll we'll love some bagels and locks and, and matzah and that kind of stuff. Um, well, actually, you know, matzah and locks. But and will you be participating in keeping the holiday? Uh, well, obviously, you gotta, you gotta be a good Jew. I will, so I might start driving tomorrow and come over for your guys' Passover on Saturday. You're more than welcome. It should be quite a cast of characters. Ooh, thanks. All right, Seal, what's your parting shot? Uh, Shout out to people in New York. Sorry about what happened the other day. And don't take the subway. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if you say don't take the subway. Just be very well, vigilant. I wouldn't. I rather yeah, walk. It's, it's not. The, it's not. It's not the safest these days. But thank God they, that one guy helped catch him, and and the guy's in custody. It's just a crazy world we're living in. Yeah, that's um, all right. I'll let him out. Appreciate you saying that, though. Uh, thanks for all for watching. All of us, as always, uh, be safe out there. Have a happy Easter for me. Livers and onions. Love you, Mrs. Seal. Okay. Mini Seal. The seal, the squatch. Be safe. Love one another. Enjoy yourself. Get ready for some nice weather on the East Coast. This has been the Sports Edge, powered by SportsHandicapper.com. The champ is here. He's right there. It's King Seal, Woo! the Westgate 2021 winner. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep reaching for the stars. Believe in the dream. Squatchy out. Squatchy.